Hi there, and welcome to this podcast on the EU-US Privacy Shield and Brexit. I'm Paul Gillingwater. I'm the head of data protection at Chaucer Consulting Group, and I'm here to help. So let's begin. Data residency means that if you own a British company which collects, stores and processes the personal data of customers from around the world, then GDPR requires you to offer privacy rights to your data subjects and imposes obligations on your company to follow several core data protection principles and prepare some necessary documentation. You probably also know that starting on December the 31st, 2020, the EU and the UK will part forever as part of the end of the Brexit transition period. However, this doesn't stop you from having to follow GDPR because there is a UK version of the GDPR which is a combination of the UK Data Protection Act and something called the Data Protection Privacy and Electronic Communications Amendments EU Exit Regulations of 2019 which amend the Data Protection Act and merge it with GDPR to create what is known as UK GDPR. This includes the UK's Privacy and Electronic Communications Regulation, which covers electronic marketing, cookies, and the commercial use of emails and faxes. So, let's say you are storing your data as a British company on servers that are physically located in a data center in the US or stored on servers belonging to a US company regardless of where the servers are located. They could be in the UK, for example. Something called the US Cloud Act means that US intelligence and law enforcement agencies have unrestricted access to your customers' data anytime they choose. And in some circumstances, they don't have to tell you when they access it. It's not just the Americans. For example, Russia has a similar law, which means that anyone doing business in that country has to store the data on Russian-based servers, which brings them into the reach of Russian intelligence agencies. And China is even more restrictive. So data residency is something that you have to deal with. Now, let's assume that you as a UK company have been in the habit, or in fact any EU business, have been in the habit of transferring data routinely to the United States. For the last few years, you've probably been using something called the EU-US Privacy Shield, which was developed to provide reassurance to European customers that American companies could be trusted to take care of EU citizens and residents' personal data. It was hastily developed as a replacement for the Safe Harbor Agreement, which was designed to protect EU citizens' data that was being transferred by US companies back to the US. Switzerland also had a similar arrangement. So we can't really talk about the Privacy Shield unless we mention the Safe Harbor Agreement, which was established to ensure that the transfer of personal data between the EU and the US complied with the seven key principles of the European Data Directive of 1995. Now, an Austrian privacy campaigner by the name of Max Schrems was concerned about the transfer of European customers' Facebook data back to the US and initiated a court case which led to the Safe Harbor Agreement being ruled invalid in October 2015, five years ago. The US Department of Commerce, working closely with the European Commission, prepared a replacement known as the Privacy Shield. That arrangement requires American companies to annually self-certify that they meet the requirements of the Privacy Shield and to display a privacy policy on their website. Among other requirements, the Privacy Shield restricted access to European data that's being held by US companies and forces those companies to be more transparent in their processing. It also provides a mechanism for European data subjects to complain about how their data is being used and to impose sanctions on US businesses who fail to comply with the rules as long as they fall within the jurisdiction of the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. According to Schrems, the provisions of the Privacy Shield were not strong enough 
to protect European personal data against the reach of the US National Security Agency and its mass surveillance of private data belonging to European citizens as revealed by the many disclosures of Edward Snowden. The European Article 29 Working Party heavily criticised the initial version of the Privacy Shield, expressing concerns about the lack of clarification regarding the authorisations for mass surveillance, the lack of deletion of data that's no longer required, insufficient restrictions on third party processes, and failings in the role of the independent ombudsman. These issues were largely resolved and the Privacy Shield began its work of facilitating self-certification on July the 12th, 2016. But trouble was brewing. In May 2016, the GDPR was passed in all EU member states, allowing a two-year period before enforcement would begin. Max Schrems established a non-profit privacy foundation known as None of Your Business, and as soon as May 2018 arrived, he initiated a court action to test the compliance of the Privacy Shield against the new regulation. It has taken over two years, with other courts in Ireland involved, before the Court of Justice of the European Union issued its opinion on Ireland and Schrems, KC311-18, popularly known as Schrems 2, on July 16, 2020. There were two major issues for the court to decide. One, can the EU's standard contractual clauses, SCC, also known as model clauses, continue to be used as an adequate transfer mechanism for the transfer of personal data from EU member states to third countries, i.e. outside of the European economic area? And two, is the Privacy Shield a reliable transfer mechanism for the transfer of personal data from EU jurisdiction to the US? SCCs remain valid in principle, according to the court, but only if the data importer can ensure its compliance with EU data protection standards. In other words, to avoid any conflict with GDPR compliance. The problem with this is US surveillance laws. These override any legal protections the US company that is importing the data may apply to protect European residents' personal data. We'll talk about SCC later. For now, the key news is that the Privacy Shield was invalidated with immediate effect. It was simply deemed not fit, prefer, not fit for purpose and was structurally unable to provide roughly equivalent levels of protection as enjoyed by European data subjects. The court's reasoning was that US surveillance law would always override privacy interests and whatever promises were made by companies such as Facebook, it could not guarantee that the NSA would not simply ignore the law and continue to carry out mass surveillance of non-US citizens. The Court of Justice of the European Union, CJEU, wasn't objecting to all surveillance. Um, they would accept surveillance that was strictly necessary, but the NSA would continue to bypass any such limits and simply search through everything online if it could reach or decrypt it. Furthermore, the CJEU found that the Privacy Shield Ombudsman established by the Privacy Shield Agreement lacked any real power to provide an effective remedy for any European citizen wishing to complain about the unauthorised access to and use of their data, including that of private businesses. The court took note of several other mechanisms, including, for example, the data export necessary for the fulfillment of a contract as being valid to continue transfers. Informed consent freely given may also be used as a valid transfer mechanism, but within certain limitations. In addition, the CJEU criticised European supervisory authorities for not using their existing powers to enforce the obligations of SCCs. So what are the consequences of the CJEU ruling? Organisations who have been relying on the Privacy Shield to authorise their transfers of personal data can no longer enjoy its protection. Specifically, US-based businesses may freely continue to transfer the personal data to the EU, but face an increasing level of risk 
that transfers from the EU are considered to be illegal. This illegality exposes the European entity sending the data to the risk of being fined by a supervisory authority, fairly low risk, or open up liability for a class action lawsuit, which is a much higher risk given the recent lawsuit against Oracle and Salesforce covering their use of cookies. In practical terms, the effect is probably going to be negligible. US authorities are unlikely to start enforcement actions against US businesses, particularly considering that US goods and services trade with the, with the EU amounted to nearly $1.3 trillion in 2018. From a jurisdiction perspective, EU supervisory authorities now have a choice to make about enforcement of GDPR. Article 46 requires that in the absence of an adequacy decision, the transfer of personal data from within the EU to a third country, i.e. any non-EU or non-EEA country, is only permitted with appropriate safeguards. Several safeguards are available, see Article 46 Part 2, although Privacy Shield is not explicitly listed. There's no provision within GDPR, including Recital 108, for the enforcement action to be taken when a data transfer has no appropriate safeguard. So this is going to be a matter of interpretation and intent. One likely possibility is that the EU will negotiate an adequacy arrangement as part of a trade deal. On the 21st of August 2020, the European Commission and the US Trade Rep Representative announced a new agreement on tariffs. This is the latest in a series of bilateral agreements that according to the EC will be, quote, just the beginning of a process that will lead to additional agreements that create more free, fair and reciprocal transatlantic trade, end of quote. A similar trade deal was reached in 2019 between the EU and Japan, and that granted the latter full adequacy between Japanese data protection law and GDPR, allowing the transfer of personal data without additional safeguards. This outcome is less likely with regards to the US. Whatever transfer mechanism is selected, GDPR Recital 108 requires that, quote, those safeguards should ensure compliance with data protection requirements and the rights of the data subjects appropriate to processing within the union, including the availability of enforceable data subjects' rights of effective legal remedies, including to obtain effective administrative or judicial redress and to claim compensation in the union or in a third country. According to Max Schrem's Privacy Foundation, known as None of Your Business, NOIB, the privacy activist who started the Privacy Shield destruction, SCC cannot legally be used by Facebook and similar companies. Schrems argues that the CJEU judgment holds that any transfer of data would be in violation of EU law and that the supervisory authority would be required to, quote, stop transfers under this instrument, end quote. Schrems goes on to say that, quote, the court was clear that the far-reaching US surveillance laws conflict with EU fundamental rights. The US limits most protections to US persons, but does not protect the data of foreign customers of US companies from the NSA and other law enforcement agencies. As there is no way of finding out if you or your business are under surveillance, people also have no option to go to the courts. The CJEU found that this violates the essence of certain EU fundamental rights. Now, what does that mean for your business? Well, bottom line, necessary flows to the US may continue. Article 49 allows necessary flows of personal data to continue to flow, but with a different lawful basis. You could, for example, select necessary for performance of a contract. If you're buying stuff from Amazon, you're entering into a contract and performance of that contract requires transfer of personal data to the, to the US, so that's absolutely fine. Alternatively, you can rely on specific informed consent. The CJEU emphasized that the invalidation of the privacy shield 
will not create a legal vacuum because data flows can still be undertaken. Key finding here, the US is simply reclassified as an average third country with no special or privileged access to EU data. Note, however, that the US law remains unaffected by this decision, specifically FISA Section 702 and Executive Order 12333, neither of which allow for an equivalent level of protection. Note that use of consent is also limited to a specific transfer. There's no option to use it as a blanket authorization. It has to be specific and informed, i.e. the potential risks of the transfer must be notified to the data subject before the consent is requested. And of course, it has to be specific. In other words, tied to a particular transfer of data, not all transfers. Now, public interest could also be used to carry out transfers, such as medical information in a pandemic, but that must be supported by EU or member state law. As a last resort, you could consider using a variation of legitimate interests, but be prepared to produce a thorough analysis in your legitimate interests assessment. According to the European Data Protection Board, Article 49 GDPR should not become the rule in practice, but needs to be restricted to specific situations and each data exporter needs to ensure that the transfer meets the strict necessity test. Now you could use certain supplementary measures which might be useful as alternatives. For example, you could deploy proven data encryption in transit and at rest to frustrate unlawful interception. Note, however, that encryption rarely trumps a disclosure warrant, and regardless of the measures taken, US firms must still comply with US laws, that is, FISA 702, Executive Order 12333, and PPD 28. Alternatively, you could find a similar processor inside the EEA and switch your business to them. Don't transfer to the US. Another alternative, reduce the quantity of types of personal data as much as possible. For example, instead of sending an email address, send a hash of the email address plus a salt, of course. Another thing, put in place contracts that require US recipients to strongly resist data access requests from law enforcement bodies. You can also use data canaries where appropriate. Of course, you could consult your local supervisory authority and ask what measures they recommend. The EDPB is expected to provide guidance in this area later this year. Note that working with local subsidiaries of US companies will not suffice to bypass legal obligations of the parent company. US national security laws apply to any data transfer via electronic means, whether it's sent for processing or backup purposes. For example, if you're using Google's G Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Oracle's Cloud, Salesforce, or Amazon, they're all in scope. You could always burn the data to a DVD and send it via courier to avoid lawful interception. The bottom line is that if you cannot find suitable supplementary measures or safeguards to protect personal data transferred to US processors or joint controllers, then the transfer of personal data, even under SCC, should be suspended indefinitely. Doing nothing is not an option if you wish to continue to send the personal data of EEA residents to the US. Now, let's talk about Brexit. The UK Brexit decision takes effect from the 31st of December 2020, at which point the UK will no longer be covered by most EU arrangements, except for those which were specifically ne negotiated in the transition agreement. 
In fact, there is already a variation of the privacy shield specifically for Switzerland and the UK. So it could be argued that the CJEU decision could simply be ignored by Switzerland and the UK, neither of which are EU member states and therefore not under CJEU jurisdiction. I'd like to see that one argued. The UK Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO, issued a statement on the 27th of July regarding the CJEU decision, which confirmed that for now, the ICO is operating under the guidance of the European Data Protection Board. This guidance recommends that UK businesses carry out a risk assessment, a DPAA, as to whether SCCs provide sufficient protection whether the transfer is to the US or other third country. If the risk assessment is not satisfactory, then the relevant supervisory agency should be notified. Note that there is a significant risk that the UK will not benefit from an adequacy arrangement at the end of the transition period. It is likely that this would need to be part of a trade deal covering wider concerns. In the event of a no-deal Brexit, the UK would most likely be treated as any other third country and be required to use transfer mechanisms such as standard contract clauses to import data from the EEA. Additionally, there may be an obligation for UK companies to appoint Article 27 EU representatives in countries with whom they have processes or controllers. An additional consequence of Brexit is that the Electronic Privacy Regulation, the planned successor to the 2002 Electronic Privacy Directive, will not automatically become part of UK law. Therefore, the British government would need to make an independent decision about including its provisions in UK laws. So, some recommendations. If you were previously using the Privacy Shield as a transfer mechanism for sending personal data of UK or EU data subjects to the US, you should urgently consider switching to another transfer mechanism and update your privacy notices accordingly. This affects currently around 5,300 US companies which have self-certified with Privacy Shield. You might, in some circumstances, have an obligation to send the revised privacy notice to your data subjects. In addition, you should carry out a new DPIA or refresh that is triggered by the fact you're using a new transfer mechanism. Depending on the nature of your business, you may wish to consider switching to SCCs or, if possible, use the provisions of Article 49 that I explained earlier. Note that binding corporate rules might also be found to be inadequate due to the primacy of US surveillance law. Alternatively, you could find another way to achieve your objectives without transferring any personal data outside of the EEA. Note also that the NSA isn't the only entity carrying out mass surveillance. Think about GCHQ or the German BND. Even TikTok, Weixi and WeChat might be carrying out covert exfiltration of personal data, according to some sources. According to the European Data Protection Board, even if you are relying on the SCCs for transfers to the US and taking into account supplementary measures like pseudonymization, additional encryption, reducing the data, etc. A decision to keep transferring data despite concluding that the measures are not adequate should be notified to your supervisory authority. Finally, if you're unclear on any aspects of the situation or you need specific guidance for the unique challenges of your business, like the relationship between GDPR and the California CCPA, please don't hesitate to contact Chaucer Consulting Group for a no-obligation consultation. Thank you very much.